Hi, I'm Kent Mayor Dana Ralph, and I want to say thank you for joining us for the weekly update for February 24th, 2023. We're going to start out with all things Olympia. In the last couple of weeks with session in full swing, um, many of us have been spending a lot of time either in Olympia to testify on bills that are coming um, before the House and the Senate or on virtual testimony. So in attendance with a lot of other local electeds from around the state through Association of Washington Cities, I spent a couple of days in Olympia. Mostly the bills we talked about were around public safety. So the chief was also there to testify. A couple of different bills. The first one was a bill that came through local government committee that would have provided a sales tax credit for sales tax that's already being collected to cities to fund additional law enforcement officers. Um, the state of Washington ranks 51 in staffing for police departments, which is not a statistic anybody wants to or can be proud of. And this bill would have really been a game changer for cities. Sad to say, um, the local government committee chose to not bring it forward for a vote and that bill did die last week. So we're hopeful we're gonna bring it back and, and see if we can get some support on that next year. We also have a couple of bills that continue to move forward. One of them is around street racing. And um, in the city of Kent, we've long had a history of street racing down in the valley, those long flat roads in our industrial valley. What we are seeing now is these intersection takeovers. So drifting and cars blocking off an intersection, it's, it's extremely dangerous. And the bill that we have brought forward um, and it is still making its way through the process would add that to the definition of street racing and then also make it so our officers could impound a car for 72 hours on the first offense for street racing. And then um, upon conviction on a second offense, that, that vehicle would be forfeited. So really just looking for some ways to deter that uh, street racing activity. Also testified over the weekend on a couple of other public safety bills. Number one, um, uh, pursuits. So it's been very popular in the news lately, the conversation around pursuits by law enforcement in the state of Washington. The biggest concern we have as, as a city is we have seen an increase in things like traffic accidents, stolen vehicles across the state, um, an increase in, in the upper 90% compared to other states in the country with the inability of law enforcement to pursue. So we have asked the legislature collectively, uh, many other cities and law enforcement agencies to, to look at that restriction that was placed on pursuits. There is a, a version of a bill that's making its way through the process that has added things in like domestic violence being able to um, pursue for. So we, we appreciate that addition, but um, not sure that we're gonna see things like being able to pursue for a stolen vehicle. The concern there is not only is there a victim on the other side of that stolen vehicle, we're seeing those people using those stolen vehicles to commit other crimes. The problem we've got right now is there's no way for law enforcement to stop that and it's not helping the safety of our community. So we're hopeful that that bill will continue to make its way through. The third public safety bill I um, want to talk about is the Blake decision. So this is the decision out of the Supreme Court around the legalization or the, the um, ability to make possession of controlled substances. So fentanyl, methamphetamine, heroin, um, a crime. The legislature last year uh, chose to make them go from a felony to a misdemeanor, which means that they're, they're handled here in the city of Kent court. Um, but then there was also some rules around how many times law enforcement had to make contact and offer treatment. The fix, we're calling the Blake fix um, this year, we're hoping that the legislature chooses a path that would allow those to be gross misdemeanors and then a person would have a, a choice to make. They could choose treatment, which is the ultimate goal, right, is to get that person facing that addiction into treatment, or they can choose to go through the court process. Again, hopeful on this front that the legislature will take action this session and get that that situation taken care of. Housing, this is a lot of things going on at Olympia. I want to say thank you to our Economic and Community Development Division, Kristen Holdsworth, for the work that she's been doing in the uh, myriad of housing bills that are coming out of Olympia. We all have established and I think no one disagrees that housing stock is a huge issue in all of our communities and we need to be doing things to increase that housing stock. The question is to what degree and how much should a city be able to control their destiny versus the legislature? The city of Kent has some pretty significant concerns around that. Basically, it would take, the way it's written um, now, it would take 89% of our single family lots in the city of Kent and allow six units to be built on each one of those lots. That is a massive increase in density here in the city of Kent. 
And it's counter to how we've been planning. We've been planning for that density for a decade now around areas where there's transit. So rapid ride is coming to Kent. We've got light rail, we've got heavy rail. This would spread that growth out all over the city, meaning access to transit's not necessarily there. Access to amenities is not exactly there. The biggest concern we have is infrastructure. So think about sewer and water and capacity and taking a street that has 10 homes on it now and saying there could be 60 homes on that street really significant changes without any funding for those changes. So I spent some time yesterday testifying before the legislature, expressing those concerns, um, reaffirming that the city of Kent absolutely believes that we need to play a role in, in increasing housing stock and that we feel like we've been doing a lot of really good work on, on that up to this point. We continue to meet, meet our growth targets. All that to be said, we've got a, a big cutoff coming today. So in our next update, I will let you know where, where a lot of these bills stand. But I'm grateful for all of the city staff that have been taking their time to put this information in front of our legislature. And now we um, leave it up, the, up to them to make those decisions. Quick shout out to our regional fire authority. Uh, last week, they held a change of command. So Chief Matthew Morris, who's been our RFA chief for about five years, retired last week. And so we spent some time congratulating him and thanking him for his service to this community and also celebrating our new chief, Brian Carson. Um, that change of command ceremony took place up at Station 74 last Thursday. It was really nice to be able to thank Chief Morris for, for everything he's done and also um, start to establish a relationship with, with Chief Carson. So the RFA is a separate entity from the city, but we, we work together on so many things, um, paramount keeping the community safe, but a, a variety of other issues and I'm really looking forward to establishing that same relationship with Chief Carson. So congratulations to both to both of them. One of the things that I love about my job is getting to learn about the great companies that we have here in Kent. So when you start going down the list, I can't tell you the number of the number of times that people say, oh, I didn't know that was made in Kent. I didn't know we built that in Kent. And, and the list is long. So this last week, I was able to attend a company called The Box Maker down in our industrial valley. Um, want to say thank you to The Box Maker for hosting the Women in Manufacturing event and for taking us all on a tour. So think about packaging in things that you receive, whether it be something delivered to your doorstep or packaging that you that's in a, a cardboard box at a store. Boxmaker does all that. They do all the printing, the design work, some really cool things. Um, and we were able to see the largest printer that HP makes um, in the country, in the world. The number one serial number of that printer is right here located in Kent. There's only eight of them in the world. Very cool thing to look at. And I also got a chance to talk to a great group of women who are in the manufacturing industry. Um, it's a growing field. Uh, women are taking place in all of the different arenas in manufacturing. So we had a great panel of of um, some women that have been able to advance their careers in manufacturing and they were sharing that with some some newcomers. So uh, Women in Manufacturing is an organization that the City of Kent has supported now for a few years and will continue to support because of the great work that they are doing. All right, let's transition to some very Kent specific things, boards and commissions. You can go into the city website and take a look at all of the different boards and commissions that we have here in Kent. Everything from the Arts Commission to the Parks Commission, Human Services, Bicycle Advisory, and right there on the website, you can apply to be on one of those boards and commissions. Right now, we're in the process of recruiting for a Bicycle Advisory Board. That group helps provide input to the city on both um, commuter bicycle riding as well as uh, fun and entertainment bicycle ride riding. Last year, they hosted a great rodeo for kids to teach them about helmets and bicycle safety. Uh, if you, something that you're interested in helping us grow our bicycle infrastructure network, um, please go ahead and apply. We'd love to um, talk to you about being on that board. One of our favorite things to do here is make sure that you know what's going on and share some of those exciting and interesting tidbits that you might not uh, know about. So recently we started a Kent Now podcast and it's hosted by Tracy Taylor and Josh Mossberg um, in our, on our communications team. We do a new episode every two weeks. This last episode, I was able to join Tracy and talk about all the things we've been doing in Olympia. Uh, we also talk about things that are happening in our neighborhoods, um, our neighborhood matching grant, and this theme that you might have picked up on that I've been talking about in our in our weekly videos really around kindness and what does that look like? How does it look when we are just 
kind to each other and um, take the time to ask somebody how they're doing, hold the door open, buy the coffee for somebody um, behind you. I have to say thank you to everyone that that participated with me last last week in the random acts of kindness post that I made. I asked everybody, what's your random act of kindness for, for the day? And we got everything from buying a meal for someone, um, telling them that they were doing a great job or just being kind in general. So thank you all for showing everyone what it means when we say we are Kent. You can check that podcast out on um, Apple Music or Spotify and it will bring you up to date on lots of fun things happening around the city. That's a perfect segue into our Spotlight series, fun things happening around the city. Tickets are going quick for the next series, um, the next performance in the series, Matt Dusk Sings Sinatra. So um, pretty cool performance. You can buy your tickets online at kentwa.gov slash spotlight series. And that concert is on Friday, March 17th. All right, last sort of plug for things that are happening around the city. On March 14th at the KM Performing Arts Center, it is the annual State of the City Address. That's an opportunity that I have to share with you all of the great work that we've done over the past year and also look into the future and tell you about some of the great things that we've got coming for the city. We'll talk about some of our challenges, how we're addressing them, and really just celebrate all that's happening in our amazing city. So again, March 14th, KM Performing Arts Center. Doors open at 6.30 and the event starts at 7. Have a wonderful weekend. It's uh, hopefully gonna warm up a little bit. It's been pretty cold this last week. Um, stay safe and remember, be kind. Just say something nice to somebody next to you. Help them bring a smile to their day and um, just take care of each other.